because some men aren't looking for anything logical like money. They can't be bought, bullied, reasoned or negotiated with. Some men just want to watch the world burn. Edward Wood is the trunk of the tree. We now need to go for the roots. Yeah, well, I pulled up a, a quote from Joel Glazer on MUTV when they bought the club in 2005. Um, I'll read it out to you here. Fans are the lifeblood of the club. People want to know what's happening. We will be communicating. And then they didn't speak to us until two weeks ago. I mean, it's just, it, sh it shows you that that there, that quote at the beginning was almost just like, we'll come in, we'll get, get in under the carpet. And then it, it shows me 100% Bearing in mind what they've done and they tried to do the Super League a couple of weeks ago, it shows me that they thought they were buying a franchise or something they could turn into a franchise. They don't realise that they bought a, a, a club that is steeped in history and a huge part of that is being part of the community. What is the cost of lies? It's not that we'll mistake them for the truth. The real danger is that if we hear enough lies, then we no longer recognize the truth at all. So much is being reported every single day about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and being supported by Manchester United's board. And I think it's all bullshit. And I needed to do this video to discuss it in detail with you. Because if we've seen anything in these last couple of months, we've seen everything we need to see after Liverpool and Manchester City. And nothing that's going to be changed by that game against Watford and whether or not Ole Gunnar Solskjaer should be sacked. So we're seeing reports that he's going to be, he's currently being supported and backed by the board. That's all bullshit, in my opinion. I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is being hung out to dry, being used as a human shield by the board, Ed Woodward, and everybody inside that board to cover up for their lack of indecision, their lack of planning. And at this stage, I absolutely refuse to believe any reports that Solskjaer is being supported. And what we are witnessing is nothing more than some sort of political power move by those who hold the guns in United's board because they want to protect themselves. I compared Ed Woodward to Wormtongue, speaking in the ear of King Theod and glassy-eyed Joel Glazer there, who doesn't really know what's going on, who doesn't really understand because he's being told what to do by Wormtongue or Ed Woodward in his ear. Glazer, he's the one that holds the gun, but Woodward is the one that's putting the bullets in it. And Woodward here is protecting himself, and this is what I need to talk about. Ed Woodward is the man who was in charge and has been in charge for the sackings of Moyes, the sackings of Van Howe, and the sacking of Jose Mourinho. And he is the man who has been responsible for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer getting that new contract in July. It was on his recommendation that that happened. I don't think that was ever necessary, really. Let's be honest. And you know, I'm not saying that from a Captain Hindsight point of view, but Solskjaer would have stayed at our club if he had one day left on his contract. He didn't need that new contract in any way, shape or form. And Manchester United doubled down on that. Well, oh, I say Manchester United. The board doubled down on that by giving Mike Feeling the contract extension. And what we're seeing here right now in this whole situation is basically Ed Woodward protecting his own narcissistic intentions and his own ego rather than protecting what is good for Manchester United. Because from the point of view of Manchester United as a football club, it's obvious that the decision has to be taken to sack Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and to replace him with a new manager to move forward and thank Solskjaer for the good and the great work he has done in certain areas since he's been manager. But instead of doing that, and by doing that, sorry, Woodward will have to admit that he was wrong that Man United's board was wrong to back Solskjaer. And what we're seeing here is nothing more than a power play to protect the pride, to protect the narcissistic intentions. And that's all it is. That's all we're seeing here. And Manchester United as a football club, we've known for years and years and years under Glazers that this has been happening and continuing to happen. And Fergie managing to navigate through it and bring success despite that being the situation inside the board is only a testament to how much genius he had. But Woodward is leaving the club in the next six to seven weeks. And the last thing that he wants is to have to sack another manager 
just before it. The last thing he wants is for him to be proven wrong again. The last thing he wants personally is for this Solskjaer situation to unfold and for Solskjaer to be sacked. That's what he wants. And that is why he hasn't said to Joel Glazer that Solskjaer should be sacked. And that is why, in my opinion, that is the only reason that Solskjaer is still in the job. Other than the fact that the club hasn't planned properly for his replacement, didn't plan for this sort of collapse at this point in the season. Yes, but what we are seeing here, remember this is the man who hired Neil Ashton as his own PR advisor in the, in, in the wake of everything that was going on with uh, Ed Woodward and him becoming a scorn of Manchester United fans. I mean, he's been a scorn for a long, long time, but he hired his own PR man. That's how much Woodward cares about his own image in the press. And what we're seeing here is Manchester United's Manchester United as a club being allowed to get dragged through the mud continuously, even, even though Woodward's already handed in his resignation, even though he's already going, he's still got that grip of power over the decisions at Manchester United. Because if we're looking at this from a purely objective point of view, then we know that replacing Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is the right decision at this point for the club. But it hasn't happened. And instead of doing what is right to protect Manchester United as a football club right now, with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, what is happening is Ed Woodward's being protected. Ed Woodward's ego is being protected. The board's egos are being protected. Their pride, their narcissism, their own self-interest and their own self-worth is being put on a higher level than Manchester United football club's own self-interests. And that is taking us underground. It's been... The death by a thousand cuts is what is being called for Solskjaer. The Glazers for Manchester United as a football club have been the death of a thousand cuts. This isn't no, this isn't a knee-jerk reaction. This isn't over the top. This has been ongoing for 16 years. It's just this is the latest example of it happening. And you can't hide from it. We haven't hidden from it. And the Glazers were on the ropes. Let's be honest, after the European Super League, after everything that happened there and the protests that happened, they were on the ropes, but they managed to survive. Of course they did. They, they, they will ultimately decide when they sell this club, not United fans, as much as we will try and try and try. They bought Varane, Sancho and Ronaldo, and it all got a little bit quiet. And now that this is happening, the murmurs of discontent are starting to come up again. It's what happens in football. Obviously, United are saying that 2010, when we were winning Champions Leagues and titles, we were still protesting. But this individual moment here with Solskjaer, this is a little bit separate and different to the whole Glazer situation. This isn't me just speaking about the Glazers. This is me specifically speaking about Woodward and his last dance and his last fuck you to Manchester United, in my opinion. What we're seeing here, because there is really truly, and I, I, I don't say this with any sort of enjoyment, there is really truly, there's no justification now for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer being in that job other than to protect the powers that be that are above him that have put all their eggs in Solskjaer's basket or so wherever however you want to phrase that Solskjaer is everything for them and if if he fails they fail and they don't want that stain on their cv so what they're doing is they're going to try and ride it out as long as possible just in the blind hope that somehow it will turn around because if we lose against Watford and he gets sacked after Watford what was the point when you could have sacked him two weeks over two weeks earlier against after the game against City and had two weeks to plan as a football club. That is what a football club would do. That is the sort of decision that a football club would make. But we're not a football club. We are Manchester United PLC. And therefore, our interests are not as important as those above us, in, in terms of fans anyway, as those above us inside that board. And that is what is pissing me off about all this situation, about everything that's happening with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and how his, his good work is starting to unravel. The, the board is putting their own interests of making sure that they give their, their, the possibility of Solskjaer being the right man as long as possible for their own self-interest. It's not because of Manchester United anymore. It's not. And that is why United fans are so frustrated this week about everything that is going on. Because it's obvious that he is now out of his depth. It's gone past that point of returning. The brink, he's, seen, he's gone to the edge of the brink and he's now gone over the edge. But instead of removing him and doing what's right for the football club, Woodward and the powers that be are keeping him in 
just on the off chance that they can be proven right. And of course, the worrying thing here is that even if Solskjaer is removed, what will change? What will change inside that club that will mean that a manager, whether it's Ralph Ragnick, whether it's uh, Richard Pochettino, whether it's Ten Hag, whether it's anybody, what changes inside that club to allow that manager to be truly successful and win us the Premier League again or win us the Champions League, the two trophies that have eluded us? Where is John Murto in all of this? We talk about the power structure in the club. He's, he's our new director of football. We were all so excited when he came in. So many were fearful that he was just a yes man. And what we're seeing now is him not really involved in any of these conversations. Maybe it's happening behind the scenes. I don't know that. Maybe I'm making a slight assumption here. But I thought John Murto did good work in the summer with the transfers we made. And now we're seeing not much. Where is he? What's going on? The football structure doesn't exist at Manchester United. We thought that John Murto was the beginning of it. But what we're seeing here in Ralph Ragnick apparently getting sort of scratched off as an option because he would clash with the board, because he would take power away from them. As I said, this all feels like a political power move. Look. Like United is, as a club is being used as a pawn in some sort of egotistical game. And it's bullshit. It's not what we all want for Manchester United Football Club. And it's, it's painful to watch. And I hate doing these types of videos. I swear to God in my life I hate doing these types of videos. I'd rather just be happy as Larry, looking at United winning 3-0, looking at the manager that we all know is right for the club, looking at the club structure and going, yeah, you know what, everything's working correctly. But it's not. Everybody's swimming in different directions and still years and years and years on from it. We've just not got that structure post-Fergie. Fergie was the glue that somehow kept it all together. And without him, we've been in free fall since. And now this is the latest and biggest example of it. We can see a man here in Woodward who only has six weeks left in his role, in my opinion, taking control over a decision he shouldn't have that much control over anymore. And as I said, he's worm tongue to Theoden, to, Glazer's, to Joel Glazer's ear, telling him everything that he wants to tell him, not what is the right thing for Manchester United. And that difference is, that's the real problem here with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Manchester United's handling of this sacking. Because if you're looking at it from a football club perspective, it's obvious that Solskjaer has gone as far as he can with these players and should be replaced. And instead, we're having to watch this public humiliation and downfall. And it's, I'm, I'm not enjoying it at all. And it's just the latest example that we've seen of something like this happening with Woodward, with the structure that exists inside our club. I wanted to do a video on it. It's more of like an opinion piece than anything else. You can let me know what you think in the comments below. Maybe I'm going over the top here. Maybe United's board really are still supporting Solskjaer from a footballing perspective. But if I'm being completely honest, I just cannot see how that is the case. You can let me know what you think in the comments below. But what do you think?